One person came to me and said, my father doesn't want me to listen to you anymore. I say, why? He say, my father claimed that you brainwashed me. So he expected me now to explain to him why I do not brainwash him. That he can go back to his father and say, no, you're wrong, he does not brainwash me. So I say to him, your father is 100% right. Tell your father that I said that I'm sorry, but I must brainwash you because I have to wash your brain from all the filth and the nonsense that he put in it in the last 20 years. Someone has to clean the dirt from there. So I have to brainwash your, <laughs> your, your head. I got to wash your brain. If you believe that that's the right way, and this is the right way, and this is the right way, and this is the wrong way, everything by you is the opposite of the truth. Somebody has to clean it, like there's a virus in a computer, you get rid of it. Now you upload everything now clean and fresh. You clean all the dirt, you clean all the problematic software. This is what you have to do. Human brain is a computer, what is it? Sometimes viruses go in. And then, you know, when you have a virus, the entire body does not function. So what do we see? So there are two kinds of wicked people. Wicked people for desire and wicked people because of rotten ideology. The question we have to ask is which one of the two is worse? Someone that come and say, I'm a reformed Jew. I'm a conservative Jew. And that's the right way. You have to, you can drive a car on Shabbat. You can marry the Goyim. You can marry men with men. You can even bring animals into the synagogue. And you can make bar mitzvah for a dog and put filin on his head. Because we, the reform people, believe that that's the right way. Or someone that come and say, it's wrong to be gay. It's wrong to break Shabbat. It's wrong to, bo- to do a bar mitzvah for a dog. It's against the law to marry the non-Jews, if I'm a Jew. And I'm a loser. What can I do? I have desires and I keep sinning. Which one is worse? A person who comes and confesses. I know I'm not supposed to break Shabbat. I do it every Shabbat. Why? I'm weak. I know I'm not supposed to smoke drugs. I do it. Why? I'm weak. I know I'm not supposed to have a girlfriend that is not Jewish. But why do I have? I'm in love with her. She's pretty. She was nice to me. Drove me crazy. Here you go. Or someone that comes and says, nothing is wrong with that. Be open-minded. It's no problem who you marry as long as it's a good person. It doesn't matter who you love. Free world, everyone is entitled to love everyone and to marry anyone they want. You want to keep Shabbat. You don't have to worry about fire anymore. This was in the old days. Today, you press a button, everything is fine. So both of them in the end, the wicked because of desire and the wicked because of his ideology, they both make the same sins. He breaks Shabbat, and he breaks Shabbat. He goes with a Goya, and he goes with a Goya. He eats not kosher, and he eats not kosher. So technically, when you look at the actions of both, just as bad. If you take them to court, let's say the court, it will be against the rule of Canada. The judge doesn't care what's the reason. You're killing people, that's it. You're stealing, that's it. That's the punishment, finished. Now go and explain why you steal. Don't believe, you believe in this, you believe in that, who cares? You stole, yes, goodbye. Jail. The question is, is it the same for God, or one of the two is worse? Okay, now I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to tell me why I'm right, not why I'm wrong. You will tell me why I'm right. Better to go to pray in a mosque, than to go into a reform synagogue and pray over there. Absolutely. With the Mag and David there. The question is, tell me why I'm right. If you want to tell me why I'm wrong, okay, we'll start with that. They believe in one God. The reform, some of them, believe also in one God. They're not saying there's more than one God. The Muslims also do things against God. A lot of them support murder or murder by themselves. Not all, but many of them do. They speak against the Jewish people, which the Torah said that they are the chosen people. So there's a lot of sins that's been done in a mosque. They plan terrorism. They speak a lot of Lashonara. 
There's a lot of bad things happening in a mosque. Just like the Reform Shul, there's a lot of bad things happening there as well. Maybe not murder, but other things. So the question is, why would it still be not as bad to go into a mosque than to go into a Reform synagogue? Why? The Reforms took something that we got from Hashem and they started twisting it around. The Muslims, and they have the Quran, what do you want to do about that? Very good. We have a clever guy here. He got the point. The point is like this. You come to Mustafa or Muhammad and you say to him, why are you following this Quran? What do you mean? It's the word of Allah. Muhammad is a prophet. He gave us the Quran. We die for it. His intentions are good or bad? Good. He wants to follow the word of God. He doesn't know the right word of God. If he would learn Torah seriously, he would not look at the Quran after that. See, a lot of things over there contradict the Torah. It cannot be from the same God. But since he doesn't learn Torah, right? Therefore, he believed that that's the book of God and that's what God told me to do. And some of the things in the Quran he follows. Even if it's difficult for him as a man or as a woman, he follows. Why? If I have to die for God, I'll die for him. That's what they believe. When you come to a reform synagogue that they call themselves rabbi or religious, it's a sad joke. It's a very sad joke because they take the Torah, they know this is the Torah of the Jewish people, and they basically do the opposite of everything that the book says. They don't follow Quran, or they don't follow other book. They follow the same Torah we have. They, we take the Torah out on Shabbat, they also have Torah. They buy it from the same place in Bnei Brak, when Yerushalayim, kosher Torah for $30,000. And now when they read in the Torah, you're not allowed to have relationship man with man. It's a death penalty. Two minutes later, what they call the rabbi, he gives a speech. We want to congratulate Robert and John for their wedding coming next week. We are going to be there to make Chatan and Chatan happy. <laughs> a minute ago, he just read in the Torah, it's death penalty. And he encouraged that in a synagogue. The next day, it's written that you're not allowed to sell parts of the Holy Land to the Gentiles. It belongs only to Israel, to the nation of Israel. God gave it as a gift to the Jewish people. When he comes on a stand, he has no problem. He will encourage non-Jews to buy Israel and even to control Israel. There's no problem with that. The Torah told you you're not allowed. I don't care. We're not racist. He knows better than God what's racist and what's not. Then the Torah says you're not allowed to eat pork. He serves pork on Yom Kippur in the synagogue. The Torah says no intermarriage. He makes weddings all the time, Jews and Goyim. So basically, everything the Torah says you're not allowed to do, he teaches that you're allowed to do. And he adds chet al pesha, he adds more to his crime by making fun or the real rabbis who teach the real Torah. Oh, he's radical, he's crazy, he's primitive, don't listen to him, he's dangerous, he's vile. They have all these words. Like, ugh, disgusting. What's wrong with Robert and John getting married in a church? What's wrong? They love each other. What do you mean, what's wrong? There's the, the creator of the world made wolves. It doesn't go by what we feel and what we like. 